Today, it's a real privilege to present our proposal for additional sports at the programme of Paris 2024. Thank you for this opportunity. For us, it was key to be clear on our mission. As an OCOG, we are not the Olympic Programme Commission. Our role is not to decide which sport should be or not included in a core programme of 28 sports. Our role is to enrich the existing programme with a few sports that help us better connect our games with our vision and with our time to reach new audiences, especially the youth. Our proposal will bring a little more of Paris 2024 to our games. It's amplifying the soul of our, our concept and supporting our ambition. The framework of our choice was decided by the IOC Executive Board. It was a bit different from the one proposed to Tokyo 2020 to even better reflect the priorities of Olympic agenda and its new norm. The IOC made clear that we should not start from the additional sports of Tokyo 2020, but from a completely blank page. The IOC gave us two main criteria. First, supporting more sustainable games. In Tokyo, the athletes from additional sports were not included in the quota of 10,500 athletes. The executive board told us it would be different for Paris 2024. Mindful of this new context, we have listened to the IOC's request supported by ASWAF to have less sports and less athletes than in Tokyo. So we are proposing only four sports and sports with reasonable athlete quotas. In fact, our proposal will add a total of just 248 athletes. In Tokyo, the equivalent number was 474. Sustainable games also meant no new permanent venues for our additional sports. In addition, the AOC is encouraging optimized venue sharing, so we looked for sports that could meet this request. The second key IOC criteria was more gender equality. It's a major priority, and we want Paris 2024 to be the most gender equal games ever. This proposal is adding exactly the same number of male and female athletes. So the framework was clear. And with this in mind, we met with 19 international federations and listened carefully to their proposals. Ultimately, and this was not easy, we had to make a choice and we selected four sports. Breaking, skateboarding, sport climbing, and surfing. We will introduce each one during our presentation today. But actually, these sports need no introduction. You have already voted to add skateboarding, surfing, and sport climbing for Tokyo 2020. You know those sports. And you've also seen the huge success of the breaking competitions at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires 2018. So why these four sports? First, accessible sports. We have always promised you games made for sharing, games that will spread the emotion of sport and encourage as many people as possible to do sport worldwide. This is why we have focused on our proposal on sports that are affordable and easy to practice. Breaking, you can do it everywhere. All you need is music. Accessibility means opportunity, especially in developing countries. It's a chance for NOCs everywhere to put more kids in sport. Maybe it's also a chance for more countries to win more medals. Secondly, youth-oriented sports. The AOC and Paris 2024 share a common and crucial challenge, like Guy was saying, to stay relevant to young people in a world that is changing fast. Today's young people are defining and consuming sport in a different way. They are choosing sports that reflect their values as a way to express their identities to the world. 
They don't just watch. They want to create, to engage with sport content across multiple channels. Their culture integrates sport with music, fashion, gaming, and films. Our additional sports proposal is specifically designed to connect to this audience. We have chosen sports that are lifestyle oriented, urban, and powered by active communities of fans on social media. To give some examples, the breaking finals in Buenos Aires achieved more than 1 million views in under 24 hours. The third criteria for us was creative and spectacular sports. Since the Paris 2024 bid, we have promised the world creative and spectacular games. So we were looking for sports which foster creativity and are impressive to watch. Since the bid, we have also had the ambition to take the games outside the venues and bring them to iconic landmarks, to add to the magic and potentially to showcase another world-famous landmark. We looked for sports that could be integrated in a temporary urban cluster. The idea is building on the success of what we've seen in the 2018 Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games. Such a cluster will combine spectacular sport, action, with a festival of urban culture, including live music and street art exhibitions. Now that you are aware of our criteria, let's find out more about our four additional sports. Maybe first, let me just summarize with some numbers. We are proposing to you four additional sports for the Paris 2024 program. With four sports, we had only 12 events out of the 333 overall. It's less than 4% of the program. It brings opportunity to complement the existing program of 28 sports. It brings the chance to build on success, to innovate and give life to both our vision, the IOC vision and the Paris 2024 vision. Paris 2024 vision for sustainable, inclusive, creative, spectacular, and connected with their time. An IOC vision for the future of the Olympic Games, more youth, more women, more urban. Innovation is always great, but we know we can never compromise on credibility. Integrity and strong governance are crucial for the international federations and for the future of the Games. In 2024, the four IF governing braking, skateboarding, sport climbing and surfing will each already have the benefits of an Olympic experience from the Youth Olympic Games in 2018 or the Tokyo Games in 2020. Breaking is governed by the World Dance Sports Federation that has its headquarters here in Lausanne. The federation was created in 1957 and recognized in 1995 by the International Olympic Committee. It is made up of 92 national federation members. So far, it has held 128 world championships and the last one finished just two days ago in Nanjing. Together with the IOC and ASOIF, we will support these four federations to ensure that they are equipped to deliver fantastic and properly governed competition in Paris in 2024. We are confident that they will each meet or six no compromise criteria. A sport that is credible, a governance which is strong, 
a qualification system offering a fair chance to everyone, a judging system that is transparent and impartial, anti-doping rules and programmes fully implemented, and competitions that are professional and respect the rules of fair play. Together with the IOC, we will continue to monitor each sport against these criteria until the final confirmation of our programmes after the Tokyo Games. Thank you, Petra. President Bach, distinguished IOC members, it is a pleasure to meet some of you again after my experience as a judge for the World Dance Sports Federation at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires. What an experience. What a city. What an incredible event. It was a massive success within our breaking community. Breaking is a young community. In France, 80% of the 1 million participants are under 18. I was 13 when I found the sport. A young kid from a small city, crazy about sports and playing handball at the national level. In one day, everything changed. What I discovered in breaking was a sport that fully let me express myself and my identity. From that moment, every moment was spent practicing this passion. In one sense, breaking is like all other sports. To become world champion takes more than talent. I sacrificed worked hard seven days a week, six hours a day. Just like every other elite athlete, I know there's no other way. Breaking strength lies in its universality. In breaking, we are all equal. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what you do, it's all about how you do it. To dance, your body is enough. In Paris in 2024, 32 athletes, 16 b-boys and 16 b-girls will be competing for gold. Now, let's have a look, a closer look, to what breaking will be in 2024. The competition format proposed by Paris 2024 for breaking is called Battles. It consists of one-on-one -on -one competition between two athletes, but there is the third player the music. We athletes do not know which music will be played during our battle. The DJ picks the music and sets the tone. We listen, we adapt, and we perform. Each battle consists of a fixed number of runs. Two runs minimum, up to five runs. It's a dialogue. The first breaker performs the second response. The breakers express themselves using certain type of moves during their battle, and it is forbidden to repeat the same combination of moves across their performance. Let me show you the four key elements that you will find in breaking. Top rock. It is the preparation before you go down. That's the moment when you create a relationship with the music. Footwork. It is the main element of breaking. This is when you show to the judges how you master the basic skills of our sport. Power move. Out of the four elements, this is the most spectacular and athletic. Athletes are flying. Freeze. This is most of the time how you end your performance and show how much you control your skill. Five judges evaluate the breakers by comparing their skills and vote after each round. Each judge compares the performance of one breaker versus the other in using the six established criteria. Personality, creativity, variety, musicality, performativity, and technique. The judges give their vote 
just after the battle through a modern electronic judging system to ensure transparency and credibility. And uniquely, our judges introduce themselves to the competition floor with some signature moves. You saw in Buenos Aires the incredible impact that breaking can deliver. Fans going wild, an electric atmosphere, media coverage on every platform everywhere in the world. Paris offers the perfect stage to take that impact to the next level. France is one of the biggest nations in the world, second only to the US in medals, even experience, and participation numbers. We even teach breaking in school like any other sport. Mr. President, distinguished members, it was your trust, your vision and courage that gave us this extraordinary experience of Buenos Aires 2018. Our hope for Generation 2024 is that we in the breaking community can keep writing history together with the IOC. And this generation has a message for you. We are three athletes qualified for the breaking world championships just hours before their flight to Nanjing. Dear IOC members, dear Olympic family, bonjour. Messieurs, dames, bel bonjour. Hola a todos. Ça va chel chel. We are here at INSEP, the French National Center for High Performance and Expertise. We, the French athletes, are training very hard for the World Breaking Championship taking place in Nanjing this next Sunday. I'm Senorita Canota. I'm 17 years old. I want to thank you for giving me the chance to compete in the sports that I love in the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires. It was a real life-changing experience. Becoming an Olympic champion in Paris in 2024 will be the ultimate achievement, so help me to make my dream come true. I'm B-Boy Laguette, and I can tell you how much all the kids from France and all over the world are craving for breaking to be part of the 2024 Games in Paris. Since the proposal was made public, the excitement is growing and the Olympic fever is already spreading. Dear IOC members, dear Olympic movement, we love the Olympic Games! <laughs> Many thanks, Unir and Petra, for your passion. You are true ambassadors for your sport, and we look forward to seeing you in Paris in 2024, as an athlete or as a judge. Thank you as well to the IOC Executive Board and to the Programme Commission for all your support and for this fantastic opportunity. This proposal is already helping us in our conversations with potential brand partners. They think these four sports can be a big asset. It's bringing even more value and meaning to our proposition, which is emphasizing creativity and connection to the new generations. Overall, this exercise has generated one of the biggest public engagement for Paris 2024 since the, the election in Lima. When we made our proposal public in February, the social media response and the media in general were incredible. We had a very positive reaction from all around the world, from the IOC, from our partners and French stakeholders, and especially from the youth. In France, an incredible 89% of young people are supporting this proposal. President, dear colleagues, we believe very strongly in the proposal in front of you today. We put it to you for your approval in the name of Generation 2024. Thank you very much. This is uh, very important uh, to be clarified that uh, we can say yes or not to Paris proposal but we can't say no 
to those sport but other sport because the only body which can present us proposals that we are examining today is Paris <laughs> Organizing Committee. And I think that they make a proposal very precise and very clear and uh, I think that we must thank them in any case because they make a comprehensive proposal. Finally, after discussion, serious, we propose unanimously to the executive board to accept the Paris proposal. Breakdance will be followed looking at the international competition that will take place since September 2019 until October 2020. If we accept the Paris proposal, I remember you that all the program concerning Tokyo 2020, I mean the events of the 28th sport and those four sport, will be decided following our Olympic Charter and our rules in December 2020 after Tokyo Games. All events will be established by the Executive Board. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Carraro, for your very clear report. And now I open the floor for questions. I have already seen the body language of some of you warming up, so it's coming in at, uh, at the speed uh, there of a break dancer. Uh, Mr. Blick. I strongly would support the inclusion of these sports into the Olympic program for one simple reason, that we need to engage and appeal more to our youth. So, I have no uh, difficulty at all in, in uh, supporting the, the choice made by the uh, 2024 organizing committee. I think the, and three of the four have already been approved, so uh, we're, we're more, than, uh, more than halfway home. When I, when I was um, walking around the street in Kabul, I see kids sport, uh, skateboarding. I see them doing breakdancing. These are activities that they do uh, spontaneously. Imagine what a message it would be for them to choosing their sport to play in the Olympic Games. If they could see these sports, uh, those new young sports reflected on the greatest sports stage in the world, that would be um, what they can uh, go for it and uh, what they can, uh, their dream would be uh, come true. Uh, that's why I think these sports are so important. They are the sports practiced by the young, the sports that interest the young and the sports that I think it is our duty to support and promote. That's why I'm so pleased as your youngest and newest member to really support this package of sport. The Olympic movement owes it to the young kids in Kabul, Afghanistan. And I see it's also owes itself if it wants to stay re uh, relevant to this new generation of future fans, TV viewers and athletes. Uh, let's keep uh, the great traditional sports. They are hugely attractive as well, but as the president said, this morning let's move with the times. Uh, I still have some problem to understand the breakdance and could be good if Tony Stanget could do the demonstration that you promised to us. <laughs> I think that behind the proposal, they have very strong uh, reasons, and uh, for that, they have my support. Uh, my observation is only that there is actually one new sport, is the breakdancing, the three we will see and examine thoroughly in Tokyo already. But if we give the chance to the breakdancer, I, I recommend to increase a bit the number of the, of the quota. 
16 athletes representing 206 countries. 16 athletes, perhaps skilled countries like France or, or some South, Africa, South Americans, Africans, they take two or three quotas, then where is the universality of this sport? Let's say five or six countries will participate out of the 206. So I, I recommend, think, please, to give them more chance to have 32-32, like the other new sports, a quota. Thank you very much. And the idea, President, that I wanted uh, to present is that actually the decision of the future of this sport is not in our hands. We can vote to include them, which we will, but the test of time will stand there. Uh, you will remember that in uh, Barcelona 92, the last time that the demonstration sport still exists, Pelota Vasca, Vasca was introduced and disappeared, and uh, roller hockey was uh, introduced and uh, disappeared. However, on another uh, corner, there was suddenly a, a very stupid idea of playing uh, volleyball on the beach, but not with six aside, but with only two aside. And everyone thought that this is very stupid because the six have very difficulty to get to the ball and suddenly two aside become one of the greatest uh, attraction of the Olympics. We will go uh, uh, to Paris with what anyhow is coming as, as a one uh, group vote. We are not voting for one by one, we are voting for all four. So uh, here we are. Thank you and excuse me for taking the floor, President. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to be a little more orthodox. Uh, some years ago, the parent body uh, dance sport wanted to become an Olympic sport. And at that time, there was a lot of debate saying well, whether this is a sport or not. And it never got through. So obviously, with, uh, as you said, uh, with time, things change. And this is a very classic example of how we've taken a 180-degree turn. Thank you. I can imagine the games in 2024, Buenos Aires will be an old antique, but we still were a good field to test these sports. I think uh, uh, our experience was uh, not only uh, what everybody else mentioned, but was the passion it generated and the interaction with the spectators. They were sitting in the field of play. We used the same field of play of basket three by three, and in less than an hour, the field of play was, was ready. So uh, I think, uh, the, especially breaking, is a very good opportunity looking at the future because it will impact very strongly in our digital Olympic fans of the future, which is very relevant for us as an institution. You know, is the biggest uh, network of fans in the world. So just to make it very, very, very short, I, I agree. You have a strategy of an urban park, and these sport are necessary to populate that urban park and interact with the spectators. So I, I support it, and I think we all do, as I heard, so I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you. Can I now move uh, to uh, vote? Uh, on the inclusion of these uh, four sports uh, to the program of uh, the Olympic Games uh, Paris uh, 2024. Who is in favor? Please raise your hands. Thank you. A against? Any abstentions? No, thank you very much uh, and congratulations, uh, Paris. Uh, This uh, has been uh, unanimously approved, and at the same time, I would also like to congratulate and uh, thank uh, the federations who are present here in this uh, room. Uh, we have from the World Dance uh, Federation the uh, Secretary General. Uh, the President could not be here because he's at the World Championships. Uh, he has a name which is very familiar to us, Feli but his first name is uh, Guillaume. Congratulations to the World Dance Federation. 
Congratulations uh, to all of you, and we are looking forward to a great cooperation uh, with you uh, to make also your sports a great success in Paris 2024.